<laughs> Hello and welcome. Today we're in the upcoming tier 10 French cruiser, the Colbert. And she is a work in progress, thus subject to change. However, she is something else. Sure, conceptually she is very similar to the Smolensk in that she puts out a very large volume of fire and is very squishy. However, when you actually play her or see her or even hear her, she just sounds, feels and seems different. And I think part of the reason is that she has uh, 16 guns, just like the Smolensk. However, these are in uh, 8 turrets, meaning that ripple fire on the ship just sounds really different and you'll hear it well a lot of it later on in this video so because she is very squishy obviously the first thing to do in a match like this is to not yolo into the enemy team because you often just go down very quickly so let's talk about the ship she has insane daka i mean insane daka she puts out 740k dpm when you put all the bells and whistles on her this is above anything else like this this is this is i think this is like double of what uh Kleber does with reload booster up well actually more than double that however of course you have to consider that she has 127 millimeter guns meaning that she has 20 millimeters of penetration uh, 27 with IFHE, meaning that, for example, standard armor of tier 8 battleships and above, you can't penetrate that, and that's a, that's a problem. Now, she is also very squishy. Not as squishy as the Smolensk, she has a good 4k-ish more HP, and uh, her citadel has a whole 10 millimeters more in armor plates, but her bow is 16 and her stern is also 16 millimeters, meaning that... Um, well, Henri, for example, will just overmatch her. However, on the bright side though, her midsection armor is pretty good. It's 30mm plate and the deck is also 30, kind of like the... Uh, well, it's the armor scheme is basically the same as the Smolensk. And this makes her quite okay. You don't want to go fight the battleship head-on. You'll go down very quickly, most of the time. However, you can bounce the shells of some battleships, for example, a uh, Burgundy with her 380 mm guns and um, as you can see the 127 mm of uh, HE pen are non-penetrating quite a bit that was 7 penetrations and 84 non-penetrations but she is an incredible fire starter because of the volume of fire she puts out and I mean she has a very good fire chance for her gun caliber I think it's like 8% with IFHE but it's something around there uh, she also has very, very good anti-air, because I th as far as I can understand, all of these guns are dual purpose, so that kind of explains that. She has no secondaries, as far as I know. She has decent range, 15.5 uh, kilometers, and this is the base range. Remember that these are basically DD guns, meaning that you can take AFT plus range upgrade. So you can make it to 18.6 kilometers with AFT, which I think is actually the preferred build, or at least the build I think is going to be rather good but you can also add the range upgrade to that which would put you at 21.6 kilometers also the interesting thing is that even though her turret layout is that uh, you have four guns at four turrets at the front and four at the back and uh actually you have these wing turrets but all of the wing turrets can all fire onto one target but there's only a small um uh, angle where you can fire all of them at the same time usually one of the turrets isn't going to fire but you know, we're still leaning with 14 guns then, which is just completely fine. She also has a speed boost, which is um, pretty useful because it makes her able to accelerate really quickly away from where she wants, where she doesn't want to be. And of course, it makes her decently fast, well, fairly fast for a cruiser. And this allows you to do things like uh, try to dodge shells of other ships, especially when you have... Um, Especially when you're far away. Of course, uh, you're probably not going to do what you, what people do with Henri's and Destroyers, but you can do something. And look at this. She's incredible against DDs. Just watch this. Okay. Hello, Benson. 4k damage. Hello, Benson. 3k damage. Oh, I missed that salvo. That's okay, though. 
uh, 4k damage. And goodbye, Benson. That took about 14 to 15 seconds with me missing one salvo. So could have done it in about two seconds less, I suppose. So yeah, the DPM against things she can actually penetrate, as in destroyers, is insane. Utterly insane. Now, she also has a heal, which is very nice to have. But I think you, in most games, you're not gonna use all four of your heals, at least not full duration heals, because um, you'll either not need it, or you'll probably just go down from much higher HP than uh, you would like to. Her firing arcs are pretty terrible though. As you can see, we're at 15 kilometers and these shells arc above basically most of the islands on this map, I think. Well, not the central ones, but at least on this side. And uh, that's actually very nice to have, but it also means that your shell travel time is long. I mean, look at this. 13 kilometers away and it already takes 10 seconds for the shells to get there. If you go full range upgrade, I'm talking the 21 kilometer, it takes 26 seconds for your shells to uh, get to your target, which is... Um, it's a bit rough to hit tar moving targets with that kind of uh, shell fly time, flight time. Now, she also doesn't have any torpedoes, unlike the Smolensk, meaning that um, she doesn't really have anything that dissuades a battleship from rounding a corner against her. Because what's the worst that the Colbert could do? Shoot her with uh, pea shooters? Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be too scary for a battleship uh, if she's close range. Now, a cruiser, however, is different because uh, these pea shooters can penetrate the armor of a lot of cruisers, meaning that uh, those cruisers will go down rather quickly. So, cruisers and destroyers are definitely dissuaded from pushing into a ship like this, but battleships, not really. Uh, she's just just different from the Atlanta in this sense because Atlanta is tier 7 and at her tier having IFE Chi allows you to penetrate the standard armor of battleships but at this tier that's not the case. Uh, she also doesn't have a smokescreen for example that the Smolensk does meaning that you'll need to island camp a lot but I guess the uh, shell arcs are advantageous there. And that's mostly the uh, what the ship is like. Her maneuverability is okay, but it's not great. Her rudder shift is 7.4 seconds with her rudder shift upgrade, and I think for a um, light cruiser as squishy as this, it's not good. I mean, it's okay, but it has got me killed before. Uh, by I.O. Earl Grey, even, with torpedoes, although I suppose I could have played that one better. So, at this point in this match, we're far ahead, and uh, I guess we'll just start pushing them away. One thing I did notice is that because you ripple fire like this and it has this massive volume of fire, it actually scares people away. Uh, maybe not so much when I'm playing the 15.5 kilometer version, but I did notice that when I went full range upgrade, which I'm gonna post in a future video, I. I have noticed that uh, people often just run away. I set up on a flank behind an island, I see enemies come in, I start shelling them from like 20 kilometers, I, I'll hit like, I don't know, 5%, 5 to 10% of the shells I fire, uh, they deal very little damage, but for some reason ships just turn around and sail the other way, because uh, I guess nobody wants to be uh, rained down upon with something like this. But I mean, at this point in the match though, here, there's not much the enemy can do, because they kind of need to push the objective somewhat. Actually, I guess they don't really, since they do hold the mid cap, they also hold the A cap, so they should, they should actually stay back. So maybe they are actually overextending, but I think eventually they would go down anyway, because we just hold a ship superior, super, superiority. Well, 10k damage, that's actually not so bad. Uh, that could have been a lot worse. That could have easily been a citadel hit. Or even multiple citadel hits. But luckily, that did not happen. 
So one thing you you might not really notice is when I fire like this, I actually constantly move my ship around. Oh, by the way, there's a CB attacking me. I don't know why. <laughs> this is one of the worst targets to attack with a CB. I mean, I didn't even use defensive fire and uh, she just all of the planes just went down. But then again, it's a tier 8 CB, so that's kind of expected. Man, I, I just got kind of lucky. I didn't realize I was being shot at by that Iowa. One reason you might not want to go range on a ship like this, though, is because you have... Um, because when you have more range, you're going to be spotted from further away when you fire. For example, if I, fire, if I fired before at the Yamato, the Iowa couldn't spot me because she was too far away. But if I had gone full range, I would have been spotted. But now it's time to open up on this Iowa and just listen to this. <laughs> okay, she fired at me, so I had to turn away, so I can't fire all of the guns, so there's a small gap in the ripple fire, but man, this ripple fire just feels really nice. Uh, adrenaline rush definitely helps, I guess. But I'm pretty sure this Iowa is gonna go down. But as you can see, I mean... Half of my shellheads are pens, half are not. I'm guessing the pens are on the superstructure. Well, have to be, because there's nothing else I could really penetrate there. And man, the CV is persistent. You really don't want to drop the Colbert. You really, really don't. I might eat the torpedo here. Nah, okay, we're fine. And I guess now it's time to go for the Ibuki. Or the CV, whichever is really closest. I'm not gonna make contact in a while, so I decided to speed up the uh, footage. One thing I do though is point my guns to the right side, even though my DPM is really really good, uh, or sorry, my turret traverse is really really good, I still want my guns to be pointed in the rough direction that the enemy is in. I also put my anti-air sector up because, well, the CV seemed to be adamant on dropping me, but it seems that... Uh, she has decided to go on someone else. I guess we'll go straight for a CV then. Unless the Ibuki comes back, which is a possibility, but she could also be going to the sea cap. And there is the Ibuki and <laughs> she has a thousand HP. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just gonna salvo fire, even though I probably should have ripple fired here because I seem to have some trouble hitting the target, even though she's only nine kilometers away. Oh my god, this was so bad. This could have actually ended up really poorly, going really poorly for me. Could have given time for the Ibuki to like, uh, you know, fire AP at my broadside and that probably would have gone poorly. But I was willing to take the risk. So, it's time for uh, the Lexington. So, the reason why this is going to be great is because the Lexington is a soft target. Uh, I should be able to penetrate her deck with my... 127 millimeter guns, meaning that um, that's going to be a lot of damage output rather quickly, and you'll really see it once I open up. I need to get slightly closer still, because she's reversing, but I'm going to start firing right now. See, there's a small gap in the firing, because I didn't realize yet that one of my turrets isn't actually firing yet. I'm gonna notice it in a second, and then, then it'll sound nice again. Man, this volume of fire just it looks cool, it sounds amazing. Not sure how it would feel on the receiving end, though. <laughs> That's just something else. 
experiencing this is just something else. But man, is this going to be annoying when you're on the receiving end, especially when the ship is going to be in divisions. My plan is to try to take a triple of these and uh, go do this to ships. And oh my god, I actually sunk sh six ships? Wow. 800 shellheads? About half our uh, pens and half our... Almost 2100 base XP. I think the reason I didn't get such high base XP for a six kill game is because I mostly fought tier eight ships. I mean, Lexington is tier, or lower tier ships. Lexington is tier eight, Iowa is tier nine, Benson is tier eight, Ibuki is tier nine, Lenin is tier eight, Vladivostok is tier eight, Hipper is tier eight, Lenin is tier eight. So the only tier 10 I hit was this Yamato. So I guess it makes sense that I didn't get that great XP, but man, 141K was HE. And only 62k with fires. That's kind of surprising. So let's take a look at the Colbert in port. And man, she looks really nice. She looks much more modern than all the World War II ships. And that's because uh, she was launched in 1956, quite a bit after World War II. And here you can see the uh, four turrets. And uh, you can see the positioning. So two at the front and then two like wing turrets. However, they can both both fire in the same direction and the same at the back so you could for example fire something like this right and this turret can fire but the firing angle for this turret and this turret at the same time is something like this tiny like this this area only here which is really really small and you'll be very vulnerable while doing so but it's possible and uh that's pretty effective most of the time one of the turrets either this one or this one just won't be firing. Now, she's modern, and she actually used to be a museum ship until 2006, and she was eventually scrapped in 2016. So, let's look at the uh, upgrades I use on the ship. Well, first of all, the consumables, I suppose. A standard um, damage control party, 60 seconds, 5 second duration. A standard defensive fire, you can instead take hydro for this, if you would like, which is also standard. Uh, then you could take engine boost, which is a 20% engine boost with the engine boost upgrade, last 270 seconds. And in the last slot there is a standard repair party. Upgrades wise, I would go with main arms modification 1, and the second slot engine boost. You could go hydro, but I would still recommend engine boost because you're always going to have engine boost. If you don't have either of these, uh, propulsion modification for example. And uh, if you obviously use defensive fire, which I would recommend right now, hydro makes no sense. In the third slot, I go with AA guns because of the current uh, meta. But aiming systems could maybe be useful too because, well, many of your shells are gonna just spray everywhere. So having a few more land where you want them to land is pretty useful. Next up, rudder shift because her rudder shift is 7.4 seconds with it. Even though her turning circle is really good and her speed is good. Rudder shift is pretty meh. In the fifth slot, I take concealment. You could actually take steering gears, and this would make your rudder shift pretty good. In fact, uh, we can just try it right now. And see, 4.4 seconds. This could actually allow you with speed boost to dodge quite many, many attacks in open water. But I, I don't know. I, I think concealment is too important on a ship like this. And I mean, even with this, it's not something to really write home about. 9.8 kilometers. There are plenty of heavy cruisers that can uh, outspot you. In the last slot, obviously, main arms modification. You can also take range, the range upgrade, but I don't really recommend it. Captain skills wise, this is what I used. Uh, priority target, adrenaline rush, uh, superintendent, concealment expert, IFHE, basic firing training, and then last stand. But I don't know if this is optimal. I think a better build might actually be that I drop the last stand and the superintendent. Sure, I lose the heal and the other consumables. The others don't really matter. The heal is what's important, but I've noticed that quite often I'm not going to use all the four heals anyway. I drop these two and I take AFT and preventative maintenance instead. So preventative maintenance will cover the last stand portion and the AFT will give me 18.6 km range, which is actually really nice to have because quite often you'll end up in a situation where um, you want to shell from behind an island, but uh, ships are either too far away or... Uh, or you simply can't fire over the island because uh, you're, you don't have the, you know, you're not firing far away enough. Or I guess most often it's because ships just aren't in range. 
So, let's look at the stats. Uh, we, as I mentioned, 36k HP, 16 turrets, 127mm, 2.4 second reload, this is with all of the reload stuff up, uh, 6.9 second, 180 degrees, so it's really fast, 1850 DPM, HE, uh, shell alpha 9% 9, 9 fire chance this is with the flags 15.5 kilometer range so putting it to 18.6 is actually really nice uh, anti-air wise she's very strong this is some very strong anti-air at least from my experience maximum speed 34.6 knots this is with the speed flag 220 this is pretty good uh, especially because you have speed boost on top which gets you about 41 knots i think but 620 meter turning circle is really, really good. 7.4 second rudder shift is mediocre though, if not even towards the bad side. Uh, it's actually worse than Smolensk, for example. Detectability 9.8 kilometers, it's slightly better than Smolensk, uh, but... Eh. You know, an Atago is still gonna outspot you by quite a bit. And the air detectability is actually really good, 4.9 seconds, especially since the long range anti-air is 6 kilometers, meaning that you can turn your anti-air off have planes fly into your anti air range, then you turn your anti air on again, and suddenly surprise, and then all the planes die. Which is uh, karma, I suppose. So, yeah, I think the Colbert is really fun to play. Like, really, really, really fun to play. I, I'm just not sure how obnoxious she's going to be when I'm on the receiving end, and that might actually end up being a bit too much to uh, have to fight a ship like this. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. Sebal Mosso, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.